So that's the two of us, us founders, who went off um, on a wild trek in uh, 1989 and discovered the most amazing rainforest in Papua New Guinea. And uh, I was a disaster because I kept on falling over and uh, getting things stuck in my feet and putting spikes through my uh, hands. But Rick was a, a real in, intrepid explorer. And we found our way to uh, one of the most remote regions of the world that has surviving and thriving primary rainforest. And it was such a profound experience. And after that walk, we were sat down by the local people and they said, we hear stories that somebody wants to take this forest away from us. Can you help us? I was a performer and Rick was a writer. And we said, we don't know how we can help, but we can certainly ask. And what we did was we actually created, with the help of local um, drama groups, professional groups, is that we created three envir environmental dramas over three years that sent the message of sustainability through the Huntstein range, range. And those dramas went on tour by dugout canoe. So it's probably the most extraordinary way to save a rainforest that people have come across. That rainforest is still standing. There is an absolutely clear and present danger right now, because we've maintained this, this relationship, around the whole carbon credit scheme. Because there are rogues out there that want to find a way to get their hands on this forest and to actually make money. So that's one of the clear and present dangers. And it's how those local people negotiate this whole new um, threat to their forest. This is one of the young chiefs um, of the Hunstein Range. He actually lives at the lower end of the Hunstein Range. And, and Lucas has been over here a couple of times. Part of our history is in 92, once we'd come back from the rainforest, is that we were invited um, by the Tory Green Initiative to do a presentation at the Tory Green Party Conference uh, in 92, where we first met Alan Knight. And um, it was at the time when the Tory conference um, were, were actually saying their uh, s the timber sustainability project. So we were right there at the beginning of this whole debate. Six years later, when B and Q were actually having their 10 year anniversary around environmental issues, is that um, we arranged for Lucas to come over and present to that conference in Birmingham. And his warning was, you keep your bloody hands off my forest, basically. <laughs> and it had such a profound impact that A, I think it helped B and Q change and think, but also about the whole timber industry change and think. So we've had a long association uh, with B&Q, and we have a long-standing association with people like Lucas. They asked us the question, what are the big trees like in your place? And we kind of went, we lost our big trees many, many years ago, so why don't you go home and do something about that, was their suggestion. And in fact, that's what we did. And in Lawshall, we created our first, what we call, forest for our children, which is creating a community-based woodland that is absolutely by and for the community. And we started off with two small acres down the other end of the village, but it's now grown to 23 acres. And everything you'll see this afternoon is, has absolutely been done by and for the community, apart from the stock fence in the early years when we got contractors in. But it is absolutely a grassroots, community-based. Interestingly enough, um, out of that, we had an invitation from a combination of people, Suffolk County Council, B&Q, and Forestry Commission, who this afternoon is represented by Steve Scott. Where are you? There you are. Thank you very much. Uh, what's your new title, Steve? Regional Director. Thank you very much. Regional Director. <laughs> he used to be conserv conserv Conservator. So we had a, um, a very good partnership, and they gave us the challenge of, OK, you've created this project here in Lawshall. Surely there must be many other people around, not just Lawshall or Suffolk or the east of England, but around the place. So they gave us a bit of um, Pump Prime funding and lots of support, and we actually launched our community woodlands across the UK. Interestingly enough, it was through the environmental champions at B&Q that this was 
negotiated. So we had volunteers in store working with their communities, starting up projects. Some of those projects are still in um, fruition and some of them are actually creating a lot of success. This is one of the projects that's in Bury St Edmunds. It's called Woodland Ways. And because it's close to a Natura's bat population in a um, triple SI <laughs> woodland, is that they decided to go for a Natura's bat outline as their design and it won an award. So that's just an example of something that we've inspired. We now have 53 other community woodlands, most of them in the east of England. The year 2000 saw a promise, a long fulfilled promise, that yet another young chief, Matthew Kaku Yafai, came over and planted our millennium yew in our golden wood. And again, that was a real marker for us because it absolutely secured the real long-term global kinship that we have. And each of our projects have some link with another country that is environmentally challenged. And of course, let's face it, we're all environmentally challenged now. So actually, it's one of our absolute cornerstones. So Kaku came over for the first time to the UK and planted the Millennium U. We are crossed fingers, hoping to get him back next year for our 21st anniversary. Because again, for a long-term commitment, he said it'd be nice if he came back 10 years later. The year 2006, as I said earlier, we actually, we were at the point where we could no longer operate from the small cottages down the other end of the village. And in fact, some of our staff were in tears because they said, we've got no way to work. And it was before all this kind of remote working that you can do these days. And uh, we found this building here. It was originally a traction engine shed, and we managed to find a way to regenerate 85% of the original timbers and 80% of the brick plinth. And we managed to source everything within about 25 miles. And this is where our first um, relationship with Ridgens, and Anne Ridgen, who is the chairman of Ridgens, is here with us this afternoon. And again, we've got a long-term relationship with Ridgens too. So just beginning to kind of begin to realise our bigger ambitions of Greenlight Trust by the presence of this building. And I have to say, it's been an extraordinary journey the last three years because it's me, it means with this kind of HQ, with the exemplar of our sustainable building techniques and also our woodland, it means that we've attracted many organisations to come here to really look at how we've done it. And the remarkable thing is that we put environment first and we put economics last. And in fact, we saved ourselves £20,000 by using the local involvement. So many people in the village have got a real sense of ownership around this building as well. Um, 2005 6 was also, Dave Hall will probably tell you about Snailwood, where we first um, made the move into finding a way to connect woodlands and business. So this was our first community woodland business project. And Simon, I think, will probably tell you about his, which was the second two. So again, just making a move into how we can really use our corporate services to connect people and the, the environment, particularly with the business focus. And uh, you'll see here the river snail and then the woodland. So they had to start, interestingly enough, by taking down some woodland to start again. But I'm sure Dave will say some more about that. The next five years, we've now got a very good relationship with Virgin Money and Virgin Unite, who are also represented here today, Virgin Unite, by Journey Virgin Money, by Steve. And uh, they've made a commitment to help us realise a, a, an ambition of 75% um, earned income against 25% uh, grant income. And we're working towards that in the next five years. But something else remarkable happened, is that some of the team for Virgin Money came over here and they looked at us and they had a feel and they looked at our website and they said, we'd like to help you redesign your website. So we went, thank you very much. <laughs> so we're now in the process of redesign the, redesigning the website so it can actually be more efficient. And, uh, and again, that's volunteers from Virgin Money. So there's a huge um, vision there for us. 